We've all seen and heard dinosaurs across various media, from movies to short TikTok clips. But this leaves us with a big question. Have you ever wondered what these prehistoric creatures actually sounded like? We know dinosaurs roamed the Earth for millions of years, from the Triassic period until the end of the Cretaceous period, around 66 million years ago. During that time, they dominated the planet in an incredible variety of forms and sizes, and likely with a wide range of sounds too. It's hard to know for sure though, since vocal cords are soft tissue and don't fossilize. This means we have to rely on anatomical comparisons with their closest living relatives, birds and reptiles. It's not surprising that most media representations, like in movies, aren't entirely accurate when it comes to dinosaur sounds. For instance, in iconic films like Jurassic Park, the roar of the Tyrannosaurus Rex is actually a mix of sounds from different animals, including a baby elephant's squeal, a crocodile's growl, and a whale's blow. While these effects are impressive and thrilling, they're quite far from how a T-Rex likely sounded. This inaccuracy is partly due to a lack of knowledge back then. Until just a few decades ago, paleontology hadn't advanced enough to give us a clear picture of what these prehistoric giants might have sounded like. Even today, the topic of dinosaur sounds is a matter of debate among paleontologists and still requires a lot more research. But we have learned some things. For example, we know that theropods like Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptor didn't walk around roaring, as shown in movies. Instead, evidence suggests they probably made sounds more similar to birds or reptiles. This makes sense as dinosaurs, along with crocodiles and modern birds, belong to the group called archosaurs. Birds, in fact, are direct descendants of theropod dinosaurs, giving us valuable clues about how they may have vocalized. It's possible that many dinosaurs produced closed mouth vocalizations, like grunts and deep vibrations, using internal structures rather than open mouthed roars. Anatomical structure plays a key role as well. Some large dinosaurs, like the sauropods, which included giants like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus, likely emitted low-frequency sounds, which may have been useful for long-distance communication. We know that animals today, like elephants, use low-frequency sounds to communicate over dense forests or vast distances. Studies suggest sauropods may have used similar sounds, as their massive bodies would have made it easier to produce low frequencies that travel well in dense environments. Paleontologist Tom Williamson, curator of paleontology at the New Mexico Museum suggests that low frequency sounds would have been especially useful for penetrating the dense vegetation of Mesozoic forests, helping members of the same species communicate. This would have been essential in environments where visibility was limited, making sound a more effective means of communication than sight. While these theories are plausible, recreating dinosaur sounds remains an area with a lot of uncertainty. Online you can find various representations of dinosaurs and their sounds, but if they don't come from reliable scientific sources, they shouldn't be taken as the absolute truth. A common mistake is to take sounds from modern birds, like the loon, then slow and distort them to create a prehistoric effect. While these sounds may be dramatic and exciting, they aren't backed by solid paleontological research. Even the most scientifically based reconstructions, such as those produced by prestigious BBC documentaries or advanced paleontological studies, aren't entirely accurate. The science behind dinosaur vocalizations is still an evolving field, and what we consider accurate today might change with future discoveries. That's why, even though media tries to get as close as possible to what these sounds would have been, we should always remember that much of what we hear is an estimate based on current knowledge. That said, some reconstructions come quite close to what we believe these prehistoric animals actually sounded like. Before we continue, if you like what you are watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future content. It really helps support the channel and keeps us bringing you more quality content videos like this one. Now, let's get back to it. Today we'll explore the sounds of three specific dinosaurs, the iconic Tyrannosaurus rex, the Parasaurolophus, and finally the armored Ankylosaurus. Let's get started. The dinosaur that sparks the most curiosity regarding its sounds is, without a doubt, the Tyrannosaurus rex. In Jurassic Park, they created its famous roar by combining sounds from modern animals, a baby elephant's squeal, the rumble of a crocodile, and the growl of a tiger. They even used the sound of a whale's blow to mimic the T-Rex's heavy breathing. This roar has become so iconic that when you think of a dinosaur roaring, it's probably this sound that comes to mind. 
However, more recent scientific research indicates that these exaggerated roars were not quite accurate. In fact, the latest studies suggest that the Tyrannosaurus Rex probably didn't roar like it does in the movies. Instead, it likely made low-frequency sounds, more akin to those of large reptiles and birds. These deep, resonant sounds, known as subsonic vocalizations or infrasounds, would have been far more effective for communicating across long distances, penetrating dense vegetation, or reverberating through open spaces. A study led by by paleontologist Julia Clark, an expert on dinosaur vocalization evolution, proposes that rather than roaring with its mouth open, the T-Rex may have produced sounds similar to those of a crocodile or an ostrich, using body vibrations to create deep noises with its mouth closed. These vocalizations might have resembled the rumbles made by large modern reptiles like alligators, whose sounds can often be felt physically before they're even heard. Additionally, paleontologists have compared the T-Rex's vocal apparatus with that of its closest relatives relatives, modern birds and crocodiles. Since tyrannosaurs are part of the theropod group, which includes both birds and crocodiles, they likely shared certain anatomical features that enabled them to produce low frequency sounds. The structure of the neck, rib cage, and resonating cavities within their skull would have contributed to amplifying these sounds. This research is supported by the idea that theropods, the ancestors of modern birds, likely shared a vocalization system based on the syrinx, a specialized organ in birds used to produce sounds. However, no direct evidence of a syrinx has been found in Tyrannosaur fossils so far, which suggests that the sounds they made wouldn't have been exactly like those of modern birds, though there were likely some similarities. An additional 2016 study, also led by Julia Clark, discovered the first fossilized syrinx in a bird called Vega V's EI, which lived during the Cretaceous period, around the same time as the Tyrannosaurus rex. This finding supports the idea that some dinosaurs had already developed a more advanced vocalization system. System. Although tyrannosaurs likely still use their larynx to produce more guttural sounds, sounds produced in the back of the throat. In short, the Tyrannosaurus rex likely didn't roar in the dramatic way we see in movies. Instead, it probably emitted deep, resonant rumbles, comparable to those of crocodiles or large, flightless birds like the ostrich. These sounds would have been more useful for communicating across long distances or warning other animals of its presence in its territory. If you're wondering what a T-Rex might have sounded like, the the BBC documentary The Real T-Rex used a mix of sounds from a Eurasian bird and a Chinese alligator adjusted for an animal weighing 8 tons, and it would sound something like this. Now tell me, wouldn't you get chills if you could feel this sound before you actually heard it? I'd say that would be even more terrifying than the classic T-Rex roar in Jurassic Park. There's something so unsettling about that sound. It's as if your body would sense the danger before your ears could fully register it, triggering an instinctive alertness, even if you didn't quite understand what was happening. Let's move on to another dinosaur we know more about, the Parasaurolophus, one of the most well-known hadrosaurs famous for its distinctive elongated crest. In 1995, paleontologists discovered an exceptionally well-preserved Parasaurolophus skull, which was a major breakthrough in understanding its biology, and specifically its vocal abilities. From this find, scientists were able to perform a CT scan of the skull, allowing them to create a detailed 3D model of the internal passages within its crest. This structure wasn't just for show or visual identification within the species, it likely also served as a resonance chamber for producing sounds. The analysis revealed that the Parasaurolophus crest was hollow and directly connected to the nasal passages, allowing air to flow through it like a wind instrument. Based on this model, paleontologists recreated the sound that this dinosaur might have produced, and the result was astonishing, a deep, resonant tone that could have been easily heard over long distances. This sound was likely used for communication within the herd, or to warn others of potential predators. A study by Dr. David Weishampel, an expert in paleobiology, suggests that the Parasaurolophus used these low-frequency sounds to send signals over large distances, as low tones travel farther than high-pitched ones. It's possible that the dinosaur used different melodies for different situations. Thanks to these studies and 3D models, researchers managed to recreate the sound the Parasaurolophus would have produced when air flowed through the internal passages of its impressive crest. The result of this emulation was a stunning sound, resonating in a unique and profound way, and it sounded something like... <laughs> 
There's something undeniably fascinating about recreations like this. Imagine being back in the Mesozoic era, relaxing by a river, and on the other side, you see a Parasaurolophus making those distinctive sounds. The idea of hearing something like that connects us to the past in a unique way. However, before we get too carried away with the simulation, it's important to remember that these recreations don't account for possible soft tissue structures in the crest and nasal passages, which could have influenced the airflow through the crest, and by extension, the actual sounds they might have made. What we know so far is that this is a highly detailed and scientifically grounded estimate, but it's still not a definitive representation of what these animals actually sounded like. These recreations bring us closer to understanding them, but there's always room for further research. On another note, the recent and rare discovery of a fossilized larynx from an ankylosaurus has offered unexpected clues about its vocal abilities. This dinosaur, a two-ton armored giant, likely made sounds similar to chirps. Quite surprising considering its massive size and intimidating appearance. Paleontologist Yoshida, who was part of the discovery team, explained that the larynx they found was both large and kinetic, similar to that of modern birds, suggesting that the ankylosaurus could produce a wide range of sounds. Sounds. Even so, it's unlikely that the Ankylosaurus sounded exactly like modern birds, due to its different anatomy and enormous size. However, this discovery forces us to rethink what dinosaur vocalizations might have been like and shows us that there was probably a greater diversity of sounds in the prehistoric world than we'd previously imagined. This finding opens the door to new research. Scientists will focus on improving simulations of these sounds and on searching for other fossils that preserve parts of the vocal apparatus in these animals. So who knows? If it was more like a bird, it might have sounded something like this. As British paleontologist Mark Witten mentioned, there are many ways to interpret how dinosaurs produce sounds. Although they aren't that closely related to modern birds, some studies suggest that many dinosaurs, especially theropods, the ancestors of birds, made sounds more similar to birds than to reptiles. This particular team proposed that their vocalizations might have been somewhat bird-like. One of the big debates is whether dinosaurs used a larynx, like most animals, or something more similar to a syrinx, which is the vocal organ in birds. Birds produce a wide range of sounds thanks to the syrinx located in their trachea, but no fossils have yet confirmed the presence of a syrinx in dinosaurs. This makes it difficult to determine when this structure first appeared in evolution. However, some fossils show that certain dinosaurs might have produced closed mouth sounds or internal vibrations, much like crocodiles do today. The discovery of fossils with complex vocal structures has reopened the idea that some dinosaurs might have been able to produce more elaborate sounds than we previously thought. This is interesting because it challenges our views of large dinosaurs, like sauropods or ankylosaurs, which have long been thought of as silent, and suggests they might have used sounds to communicate over long distances, much like large animals such as elephants do today. In the end, we're learning that dinosaurs likely had a range of sounds as diverse as modern animals. From deep, low-frequency sounds to high-pitched and complex ones, large dinosaurs might have had a repertoire of sounds for communicating and adapting to their environments. The big question is, do you prefer the classic movie representations, like those iconic Jurassic Park roars, or the more realistic and complex version that science is now uncovering? With each new discovery, we're getting a little closer to revealing the secrets of how these creatures actually sounded. And keep in mind, this is still a field of research that's constantly evolving. What seems reliable today could change with new discoveries tomorrow. But who knows, maybe soon we'll be able to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and gain a better understanding of the sounds of these creatures that once ruled the earth. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, leave your like and subscribe to support me to create more content. See you soon in the next video.